Hello everyone. In this video we're doing activity 6-1 in Jamobi. So in this example we have 15 people and they were all asked to complete a survey asking about questions about how likely they are to use a cell phone while driving. Then everybody watched a video about the dangers of a cell phone while driving and then they completed the same survey again. So the survey is scored so that higher numbers indicate that they're, they say they're more likely to use their cell phone when driving. So we're doing a repeated measures t-test because we have the same people measured twice. So you go ahead and click on t-test and then a paired samples t-test. Now we have two variables. We're looking at scores before and scores after they uh, watch the video. We're going to look for the mean difference and a confidence interval around the mean difference and an effect size with the confidence interval around that effect size, descriptive statistics, and we can also get a descriptive plot while we're doing that. Next, we need to set up our hypotheses. So you have three choices, a two-tailed test or a one of the one-tailed tests. In this case, we're actually going to do a one-tailed test. Because in this case, what we're interested in is whether or not scores go down after they um, watch the video. We're not going to do anything different about our conclusions regarding this intervention if scores go up. We're not going to use it if they don't change. We're also not going to use the intervention if scores go up. So our hypothesis is that scores will be higher at time one than time two. Right? So in terms of my hypotheses, I'm selecting the second one here. All right, so looking at our results, we have the mean at time one was 5.2 with a standard deviation of 1.15, and after our mean was 4.8, also with a standard deviation of 1.15. Right? So it looks like scores went down, but we have to determine whether or not that difference is likely to be just due to sampling error or if it's probably a real difference. So you can also see those differences reflected in the graphs below. Now, we computed a t-test, and our t is 2.10 with 14 degrees of freedom, which was we had 15 people minus 1 for our degrees of freedom. Our p-value is 0.027, which is pretty strong evidence against the null, which suggests that scores did go down, and they went down more than what be, would be expected by sampling error. The actual amount they went down was 0.4 in terms of raw score units. Our standard error of the difference score is the typical distance we would expect between these sample means or the typical mean difference we would expect if in fact the null is true. Now, if you look at the confidence intervals, you can see that they have computed them with infinity as the upper limit here. When you're looking at confidence intervals, after having done a one-tail test, switch the hypothesis back to a two-tail test, and it'll compute the two-tail confidence intervals. Okay. So my confidence intervals around the mean difference, the raw score, is that we're 95% sure that the true mean difference is somewhere between negative 0.008 and positive 0.80. Okay. In terms of effect sizes, our standardized effect size is 0.54, which is a moderate effect. It tells us that there's about a half of a standard deviation difference between those two means. And we're 95% sure that the true uh, 95 or the true effect size is somewhere between negative 0 0.009 and 1.07, which is a huge range, right? Basically, we're 95% sure that there's something between no effect and a very large effect. And the reason for this is that there's a very small sample size, right? With 15 people, you're not going to get very precise estimates there. You should be less confident in your results, right? Also, more generally, this isn't a great study. We're Not only are we only looking at 15 people, but we're asking them, how likely are you to use your cell phone? Which people may or may not be reporting honestly about, but also just because they say they intend to do these things doesn't mean it actually is going to change their behavior. Right? So overall, it's a pretty weak study that we're looking at there. All right, so that is all you need to know to answer the questions for Activity 6-1. Good luck.